As of 2022, close to 600 individuals from 42 different countries had gone into space. These individuals from all the nations have made different world's records. The longest time spent in space on one mission is the 438 days spent by cosmonaut Valery Polakov. In 1997, China selected 12 military test pilots for its first group of Taikonauts. These were the first set of Taikonauts to go up in orbit. Yang Lui made a 14-orbit flight in October 2003 on Shenzhou 5. Two U.S. astronauts, Franklin Chang Diaz and Jerry Ross, made seven space flights, the most by any single individual. The youngest person to go into space was Oliver Damon at 18. In today's episode, we are comparing the differences and similarities between the three biggest space agencies in the world today. This is Race to Space. If you like watching content regarding space exploration, consider subscribing. Let's be fair, China was the last one to start working on its space program amongst the three. China's space program was established in 1960s. Various proposals for crewed spacecraft were made at that time. 1997 was the first time when a manned crew mission was successfully launched with the pool of 14 candidates, and after a year in 1998, the PLA Astronaut Corps was formed for the proper training of Taikonauts in China. We have made a detailed episode on how to become a Taikonaut separately. You can check that too. Well, the training of a Taikonaut is extremely tough and challenging. They're required to train in a hundred subjects in eight disciplines, which lasts thousands of hours. They have to be all-rounders in every department, and there are 17 physical checks just to test endurance and adaptation to the space environment. Despite the fact that many of the first generation of American astronauts were trained as test pilots, their selection was based more on their ability to function well under pressure than on their actual piloting abilities. Since the spacecraft used in Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs had limited maneuverability in orbit and return to Earth via parachute, to fill the two positions of astronaut candidates that were created in 1978 with the introduction of the space shuttle, which served as a laboratory and operations center while in orbit before transitioning to a high-speed glider for the return flight to Earth's atmosphere and runway landing, NASA began selecting two types of people. One group had to have a lot of expertise flying jets. These future astronauts were prepared to fly the shuttle and eventually lead a shuttle flight. Mission specialists were selected for a second batch. Individuals with advanced scientific, medical, or engineering knowledge and expertise were not necessary to be pilots. Several people from several countries became international mission specialist astronaut candidates in 1992 in anticipation of taking parts in flights to the International Space Station. They were taught to be in charge of running shuttle and space station systems, as well as carrying out payload and experimental operations throughout a mission. Extravehicular activities were also carried out by mission specialists, spacewalks. In addition to the shuttle pilots and mission specialists, a third group of people traveled into space as part of the cargo. Experiments and payload operations they were familiar with served as a springboard for their work. It was common knowledge that payload specialists had a reputation as astronauts, although they did not undergo selection or training and were not considered NASA career astronauts. They did, however, have the necessary education and training for the job. NASA, a non-U.S. space agency, or a payload sponsor nominated a payload specialist for a specific mission. Krista McAuliffe was a teacher in space payload specialist on the tragic Challenger mission when two members of Congress traveled on the space shuttle as payload experts in the 1980s. In October 1998, John Glenn, the first American to circle the Earth, returned to space as a payload specialist on the space shuttle. Only a small percentage of payload specialists have done more than one space journey. Applicants for astronaut positions can come from both the private sector and military. All applicants, with the exception of the education mission specialist, must hold a bachelor's degree in engineering, a biological, physical, or mathematical science. As a pilot or a mission specialist applicant, you can be a man or a woman. After submitting a formal application to NASA, potential astronauts must undertake a rigorous screening procedure that includes personal interviews, medical evaluations, and orientation to the space program. 
individualism and self-reliance are demanded of those picked by NASA, according to the space agency's guidelines. The typical age of a NASA astronaut candidate is anywhere between 30 and 40 years old. 6 feet 4 inches, 193 centimeters, is presently the maximum height for an astronaut candidate, while the minimum height is 4 feet 10 and a half inches, 149 centimeters, 163 centimeters. There is an intensive training program at NASA's Johnson Space Center near Houston for astronaut hopefuls. Shuttle and space station systems, navigation, orbital dynamics, and material processing are among the subjects they study. They also study mathematics, geology, meteorology, oceanography, astronomy, and physics. They are also taught how to survive on land and at sea, as well as how to use dive gear and spacesuits in zero-gravity environments. Candidate astronauts are officially recognized as NASA career astronauts once they've completed their training. For the duration of the trip, the astronauts and the rest of the crew train together to prepare for the specific tasks of their journey. Russian classes can be included if they're going to be on the ISS for a long time. During training, they use a range of simulations and other technology to become familiar with the planned actions of the mission and to respond to simulated emergencies and other deviations from regular operations. Now that NASA has retired the Space Shuttle program and is focusing on long-duration flights to the International Space Station, there is no longer a clear separation between pilot astronauts and mission specialists. NASA astronauts work in a wide range of positions, from mission control communications who keep in touch with their co-workers in space, to senior managers while they aren't in space. It has been customary in the Russian space program to separate cosmonauts into two groups, mission commanders, who are typically pilots, and flight engineers. To determine their suitability for long-duration missions, cosmonaut candidates must undertake a thorough physical test, similar to that required for astronaut and taikonaut candidates. This examination might take months to complete. It takes two years of general spaceflight training at the Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, outside Moscow, Russia, to become a cosmonaut candidate, followed by two years of training on spaceflight hardware. A further year or more of training is required before an individual may be assigned to a specific mission. Astronaut training in Russia and former Soviet countries has focused on long-term spaceflight and problem-solving rather than on the specifics of short shuttle missions since the latter are much more likely to last longer. U.S. astronaut training has evolved since the late 1990s towards the same method for astronauts who intend to remain on the ISS. Only the United States, Russia, and China have launch vehicles and spacecraft capable of taking humans into space. The 22-country European Space Agency, Japan, and Canada have similar programs for the selection and training of government-sponsored astronauts. The astronaut training programs of the United States and Russia accept candidates selected by other countries to go into space. Those preparing for missions on the International Space Station ISS, may also visit locations in Europe, Japan, and Canada for specialized training on space station hardware. Private space flights have been made by a small number of people, while others, like the Japanese television journalist Akiyama Tokohiro, were paid for their time on the Mir space station, others were sent as guests of their own accord. American entrepreneur Dennis Tito, South African businessman Mark Shuttleworth, American businessman Gregory Olson, Iranian-born American engineer Anoush Amiri, Hungarian-born American computer software executive Charles Simony, British-born American computer game developer Richard Garriott, and Canadian performer Guy Laliberterre used their own resources to pay the multi-million dollar costs of their brief trips to the International Space Station aboard a Russian spacecraft between 2001 and 2009. Individuals that meet these criteria are referred to as space tourists or space participants. Well, that's it for today. We hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one.